The University of Texas at Dallas is developing cheaper, effective, and efficient ways to gather information that can detect harmful substances in the air, assist our military in battle, and support agricultural producers. Dr. David Larry is leading a team to develop a fleet of remote-controlled helicopters that will be equipped with sensors to measure air quality, assess the health of cattle in a herd, and track the effects of a terrorist attack, among other things. We have several projects already for using satellite data for health applications and the main focus there is estimating particulates like PM2.5 which can cause health issues that can be triggered, so asthma and so on. And the idea there is to be able to have personalized alerts so that if we have asthma or some health condition, if we know what the global distribution is on any given day, uh, we could have real-time alerts, so that's looking forward. But looking backwards, it's really great for epidemiological studies. So we've just been supported for that by the DOD, the NIH, and uh, the Institute for Integrative Health. We then want to make the same type of observations that we're remotely sensing in situ from the helicopter. So you can imagine it's public health on a neighborhood scale. So with these uh, UAVs that are pretty quiet. You could imagine having routine surveys over a neighborhood like what are the particular concentrations, what are different gas concentrations that could be causing health issues. And the same platform, the same helicopters and so on, we also want to use for tornado forecasts. It turns out that if you can make measurements just ahead of the tornado in these two regions, so this is imagine you're looking down at a tornado, in the forward flank outflow region and the rear flank gust front. If you can sample the thermodynamics of the atmosphere, so measure the temperature, the pressure, the humidity, and the wind speed, which we can do from our robotic helicopters, then you have two advantages. Number one, you get insights into what's going on, which helps to improve the theoretical models of it. But secondly, and probably more useful for the tornado forecast, that current information helps you do a better prediction. Then the other issue is for gas leaks. What we will have, we hope, is a, a swarm of these helicopters which will have real-time interactive guidance. So instead of pre-determining the path they're going to fly, you can imagine them like a, an aerial sniffer dog. One of the second to last areas is actually agriculture. So that's really huge. The actual combine harvester is controlling the tractors and so on, these can be unmanned. So it tells the tractors when to come, where to come, and you know where to go. So imagine now your farmer who has a huge field, you have a routine survey by our unmanned robotic vehicle that flies over it. And then that's coupled with the machine learning that says, okay, when you see this signature, you have this kind of issue. Now that sort of also brings in the emergency response. So what you can do with a laser scanner, in fact, this video you see here that the Navy Research Lab did, what you see there is an actual topography of New York. And then you see a bioterrorist um, mm. simulation. They flew a plane over New York City with a laser scanner and acquired the actual topography that's being used there. So the 3D geometry of all those buildings to uh, about a meter resolution. But with our helicopters, because, well, for two reasons. One, we're flying lower. Um, and also, in this case, it costs $50,000 to do that. You have to hire someone else with the plane and so on, but now we can do it for ourselves. Um, we can get centimeter accuracy. You could imagine then a first response team was coming in like the first hour after an issue. If they had some of these aerial vehicles and maybe ground robotic ones to go in there, it could help the lives of the first responders, you know, not to walk into something. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just kind of fun. You can see that it has more than enough excess power to carry any kind of payload that we want to put on it. Can some of the uh, regular helicopters that we're accustomed to do what you just did with this? Uh... No, they don't have that kind of aerobatic capability. Matter of fact, some of the G-forces that I pulled during that flight would probably uh, black out or kill a pilot. <laughs>